In this video, we will discuss convergent sequences. Before watching this video, you should read section 2.1 up through at least example 2.1.3. Our discussion will focus on definition 2.1.2 and requires that you understand the earlier portion of that section. Recall that a sequence is a function from the natural numbers to the real numbers. In other words, a sequence is an ordered, countably infinite list of the range values of the defining function, which means that the order of the terms matters and that there are countably many terms in a sequence. For example, the function f of n equals 1 over n yields the sequence 1, a half, a third, a fourth, and so on, and we could also represent this, this with the notation parentheses 1 over n parentheses. We are now ready to explore the definition of a convergent sequence. Let a n be a sequence of real numbers, and let a be a real number. We say that the sequence a n converges to a if for every positive real number epsilon there is a natural number capital N such that the distance between a n and a is less than epsilon whenever little n is greater than or equal to capital N. When this happens, we call little a the limit of the sequence a n and represent this symbolically with either the arrow notation or the limit notation. Looking at the definition of a convergent sequence more closely, suppose we have a sequence an and a limit candidate a. The epsilon in the definition is acting as an error bound, and our goal is to only consider sequence terms which are within epsilon units of a. Capital N represents a position in the sequence, and we must choose this explicitly. To visualize, suppose we have a sequence a n and a limit candidate a. This is depicted in the top picture. Choosing an arbitrary positive epsilon creates a neighborhood around a limit candidate a, and we now need to find a position in the sequence n after which every term is within this neighborhood. This is often the most difficult step of a proof. Oftentimes, the choice for capital N is not explicit in the sense that we choose capital N to be a specific value like 10 or 984, but we will explicitly state the existence of a natural number with a specific property. For our examples here, we will use the Archimedean property to do this. See corollary 1.3.6b on page 31. Here. As a first remark on the definition, Notice that in the definition, we refer to little a as the limit of the sequence, which implies uniqueness. In other words, a sequence cannot have two limits. You will show this in the exercises. Also, the limit little a is an integral part of the definition of a convergent sequence, and hence we must know this value before attempting to prove that a sequence converges. In other words, we must make a guess as to what the limit of the sequence is, and then attempt to use the definition to show that the sequence does in fact converge to our proposed limit. Finally, if the sequence does not converge, then we say that it diverges. This is actually more complicated than it seems. For a sequence to not converge, we must show that there is no real number a which satisfies the definition of a limit. We will discuss this concept more in class. For a first example, we will show that the sequence 1 divided by 2 n cubed plus 4 converges to 0. To do this, we will discuss the components of the proof before writing out a formal proof. In other words, we will show all of our scratch work. You should get used to this type of pre-thinking. One thing to notice as we do our pre-work and as we write our proof is that we are work is that we are working initially in the opposite order that things will appear in our proof. Given a positive number epsilon, we must find a natural number n so that all terms at or beyond the nth position in the sequence, signified by the statement little n greater than or equal to capital N, are within epsilon units of zero. To do this, we will first attempt to relate the quantity absolute value of a n minus a to little n and then to capital N, keeping in mind that we are always assuming that little n is greater than or equal to capital N. To begin, we identify a n and a. For this example, the quantity a n minus a in absolute value is given by the absolute value of 1 over 2 n cubed plus 4 minus 0. Simplifying, this is simply equal to 1 over 2 n cubed plus 4. Thus, we need to relate 1 over 2 n cubed plus 4 to little n and then to capital N. 
At the moment, it's easier to work independently with the denominator. Our goal is to simplify the expression 2n cubed plus 4. To do this, we will use lower estimates, and you will see why when we return to the denominator. We will make use of the order properties of the real numbers. See, see definition 1.2.4, theorem 1.2.5, and exercise 1.2.5. So, first, notice that 2n cubed plus 4 is greater than or equal to 2n cubed since adding 4 makes any quantity larger. Next, 2n cubed is greater than or equal to n cubed since doubling a natural number makes the quantity larger. Furthermore, n cubed is greater than or equal to n since cubing a natural number increases the quantity. Finally, little n is greater than or equal to capital N. This is simply an assumption we make due to the condition given in the definition of a convergent sequence. Now, we want to use the information above to estimate the quantity 1 over 2n cubed plus 4. Keep in mind that when we invert the two sides of an inequality, the sign also reverses. Thus, in the line above, all of the greater thans change to less, less thans and we have 1 over 2n cubed plus 4 is less than or equal to 1 over 2n cubed, which is less than or equal to 1 over n cubed, which in turn is less than or equal to 1 over n, which is less than or equal to 1 over capital N, as long as little n is greater than or equal to capital N. Now, if we can choose capital N so that 1 over capital N is less than epsilon, then we will have our proof constructed. But this is exactly what the Archimedean, Archimedean property gives us. Turn to page 31 and corollary 1.3.6b. From this we see that if epsilon is positive, then we can choose a natural number capital N with 1 over capital N less than epsilon. Now we are ready to write our proof. We will use all of the scratch work above, but we will present our work in the reverse order. In other words, for the proof, we will use the order given in the definition of a convergent sequence. For our proof that 1 over 2n cubed plus 4 converges to 0, we begin by letting epsilon be a positive number. Next, by the Archimedean property, we can choose a capital N in the natural numbers such that 1 over capital N is less than epsilon. If we now only consider little n to be greater than or equal to capital N, recall that this means we are only considering sequence terms at or beyond the nth position in the sequence, then we have that the distance between a n and a is equal to the absolute value of 1 over 2 n cubed plus 4 minus 0, which simplifies to 1 over 2 n cubed plus 4, which is less than or equal to 1 over 2 n cubed, which is less than or equal to 1 over n cubed, which is less than or equal to 1 over n, which is less than or equal to 1 over capital N, which is less than epsilon. Therefore, we have satisfied the definition of convergence, and we conclude that the sequence 1 over 2 n cubed plus 4 converges to 0. So nothing you can't edit out so far. Okay. For a second example, let's show that the sequence 2n plus 2 over 3n plus 2 converges to 2 thirds. Here, the quantity absolute value of a n minus a is given by the, the quantity absolute value of 2n plus 2 over 3n plus 2 minus 2 thirds. Getting a common denominator, this becomes absolute value of 6n plus 6 minus 6n minus 4 divided by 9n plus 6. And simplifying, we have absolute value of 2 over 9n plus 6. Applying the absolute value, this simplifies to 2 over 9n plus 6. Thus, our goal here is to relate 2 over 9n plus 6 to little n and then to capital N. Working in a manner similar to the previous example, but in the denominator from the outset, we have 2 over 9n plus 6 is less than or equal to 2 over 9n. This is then less than or equal to 2 over n. And finally, 2 over n is less than or equal to 2 over capital N whenever little n is greater than or equal to capital N. If you need to pause the video and work through this estimate by first considering the denominator independently like we did in the first example, do so now. Okay. At this point, we've done all the estimating that we can with the denominator, but notice that we haven't done anything with the 2 in the numerator. This is easily handled by the Archimedean property. Indeed, we now need to choose a natural number capital N such that 2 over capital N is less than epsilon. 
Notice that this is equivalent to choosing a natural number capital N with 1 over capital N less than epsilon over 2. And this is how we will make our choice in our proof. We are now ready to write our proof. To show that 2n plus 2 over 3n plus 2 converges to 2 thirds, we first let epsilon be a positive number. By the Archimedean property, we can choose a natural number capital N with 1 over capital N less than epsilon over 2. Notice that this is equivalent to 2 over capital N is less than epsilon. Observe, observe that our technique is very specific here. We choose capital N according to the form of the Archimedean property, but we also manipulated that inequality to the form which we will use later on in our proof. If we now only consider little n greater than or equal to capital N, we have absolute value of a n minus a is equal to the absolute value of 2 n plus 2 over 3 n plus 2 minus 2 over th minus 2 thirds. Getting a common denominator, this becomes absolute value of 6 n plus 6 minus 6 n minus 4 over 9 n plus 6, which simplifies to absolute value of 2 over 9 n plus 6. Applying the absolute value, this becomes 2 over 9 n plus 6. In turn, this is less than or equal to 2 over 9 n, which is less than or equal to 2 over n, which is less than or equal to 2 over to capital N, which is less than epsilon. Therefore, we conclude that the sequence 2n plus 2 over 3n plus 2 converges to 2 thirds. The end. Done stop.